All right, so we're almost done with with the black and white text. Fairly complicated, but it shows you all the things that are possible. In little fine tuning, I'm going to take the D. I'm going to tilt it a little bit with its skull. So what I'm doing a lot of is something that's really important to be able to do in Illustrator, which is select multiple paths you know, carefully so that you can do things like rotate them, scale them, transform them. And the one element that's missing is the little blob brush. Now the reason the blob brush didn't just integrate with the D is because I had it locked when I used it. So it just created a little mask on top. But that's what's great about just using black and white in Illustrator to make your text. And then the E, I noticed it has this little gash in it. That's going to bug me later. So I'm going to go to my donkey text and just clean that up if I can. That little um, that little jog I think is probably from the the stroke. So it actually wasn't. It, sometimes that can happen in the stroke because a stroke will always be a uniform thickness. So if there's any break in the form, sometimes it will create little spikes coming out of your shapes. And that's another reason to often outline your strokes before you output them. And then the last thing I want to do before I save this as an EPS is to take the heart and just the, the white part of the heart, copy it, edit, paste it in place, right? And then go to the one behind it and change its color from white to black and then make it bigger using the large selection tool. So another way you can do kind of what looks like a stroke but have a little bit more control of it is to make a duplicate of it, just put it behind and then grow it, right? It won't be as even a stroke. You know, it won't be as exact. You'll see that it gets a little bit thinner there, but sometimes it can be a little bit more interesting. And that's just, just like doing an offset. So I wanted to try that. Uh, by doing that, I can also do things like just nudging it to one side and making it like a drop shadow almost, just on the heart, all within Illustrator. And stretch it so it feels more like a drop shadow. What I wish I could do is kind of warp it. I can try a different tilt. I could try, um, that looks pretty good. I can try using the shear option and just getting a slight, slightly different angle on it. So object transform shear. That shear is way too strong. Let's downplay it a little bit. Let's try four. A shear of four degrees. Nope. Let's try. Yeah, it's so sensitive. All right. So just a really slight outline of the heart there. I think that helps. And then I'm questioning again the uh, the stroke on the my. Like, do I want it or not? I can't decide. What do you think? <laughs> so, do you think it looks the my looks better with a little outline around it or without? With the outline, without. I think it reads a little cleaner without. So I'm going to leave it off. Now that's what's great about a vector file. If I just turn off the eyeball and save the EPS, that is what it is. But if I ever open that EPS in Illustrator again, I still have all these options built into it. And it's still, because we're not using color in Illustrator or gradations especially, those take up a lot of memory, the vector file is going to be pretty clean.
So how do I output this as an EPS? Well, I have to just turn off these other aspects, right? Turn them off. I try to lock everything, even the things that I don't want. Oh, I don't want to turn off the things I actually need, though. There we go. And then this is what I want. Black and white on a gray background so I can see what's coming through. File, save as an EPS with all the default. But this is my um, second round of type, you know, for this assignment, because I did the top and now the bottom type. So multiple EPS. It's asking if I want to embed the files, preserve the links. Um, embedding the files takes a lot of memory. Those are all the typefaces I'm using. So I'm just going to say preserve the links because the ones I'm showing are all outlined and you don't need to have the typefaces for this to show up correctly. They're, they're in all my hidden layers. All right, I can close this all up. This will be my inspiration for the coloring. So I'm going to open that up. There are a lot of different versions, but I like this. You can see it has an offset and an extra stroke. Then I go to my, my poster, and I take this new one, and I drop it in, and I place it, and I kind of envisioned it being in the corner like, like so. I can make it bigger or smaller. Let's try it on middle gray. Right. So at this point, I want to turn off uh, everything except my gray background layer. And I want to turn off the effects on my type. And I'm going to turn off my spot illustration because I don't know that that's the way I'm going to finish it. So this is a good file to submit just to show your black and white type solutions. And if you want to, you can just do it right on white. But the reason I want the gray there is I want to show where I intentionally have it filled in and what the strokes are doing. So before I go too much further, this is going to be the second thing I submit for this assignment. I had my text blocking sketch. Let's see if I can show you that. Trying to keep everything organized in my assignment folders. So my text blocking sketch should be here. There it is. So that's the first thing I want to submit. I'm going to go ahead and copy it to the desktop. This is going to be the next thing I submit. Just a JPEG. Fewer than five megabytes. So this is the black and white type to the desktop as a JPEG so I can make it small. Because remember, our poster is pretty high resolution. So at 12, but because it's just black and white, it's tiny. So it's only one megabyte. Even at 14 by, by 19 inches at 350. Okay, so that's the second thing I'm going to turn in. Now, the next thing are all of these color effects. The color type. Right? And I still really haven't chosen which, which one I'm doing. I'm being fairly indecisive, which is not great. But if I turn on these effects again, I can decide, right? So I've got the colors there. Now I want to play with the colors of my little donkey. To help find it, <laughs> got a lot of layers going. Remember, you can always use uh, the Move tool and Auto Select Layer. It's supposed to work. 
All right, there it is. Very good. I'm going to go ahead and move this to the very top. Now, the benefit of moving it to the very top is I can even have it go over the top of my borders if I want. You see, and kind of break the edge. That might be interesting. Actually, I like that. So let's do that. Let's do that on both sides a little. Hold down shift because I don't want to distort it. But tilt it maybe at a bit of an angle. Yeah. Okay, now to really kind of show that it's breaking the edge, the border edge, this is why we designed a border into it. I could give it a drop shadow. But if I really liked that, yeah, let's say I really like that, then what I really should do is turn off the effects here and save it quickly because I like that layout better than this layout, right? So I'm going to I'm going to update that. And it's good to save your process as you go. Your decisions will change. Your taste will update. All right. But now I'm ready to color. And the easiest way to color, black and white vectors, <laughs> no, no. is to use the layer styles. But the difference is, here I have white in my layer. So if I just do a color overlay, I'm not going to like what happens. Right? Because it will fill in all my white. So instead, what I might do for this to color it is make a duplicate and then rasterize the duplicate so that I can do things with the magic wand, like select all the blacks. And if I want selective ones like this, like I can find colors for each of these individual shapes. Now, if I open this up, let's see, in Photoshop, I can steal the colors directly, something we did with our coloring, right? And then I'm just going to arrange it side by side. Or I can float all in windows. Or I can consolidate all to tabs. This is something we can do a lot when we do um, digital painting. But the way I would want to do it is window, arrange. I'm going to do two up vertical. And I'm going to shrink this one because I just need to steal colors. Make it pretty small. All right. So now I'm here. I have that selected. So I'm going to steal a color with my paint bucket tool, holding down Option, steal that, paint it in, steal this, first select it, paint it in. Select inside my heart. Use the paint bucket tool, steal a color, maybe the nice pink, put it in. And now the rest of it, I think I can do with layer styles to the vector. So, color overlay, 100%, okay. Or maybe not. Let's see. Oh, this is what I need to do. I need to turn contiguous off and select all the black from my rasterized one and delete that so I can use the vector color underneath. So color overlay, I want to steal the color. And I'm going to steal, let's see, I think this blue. A little dark. Uh, 